Good morning. Thank you, and it is truly an honor to be here with you. I am from um, Columbus, Ohio. I lived there all my life until I moved, retired actually, and moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I got into the ministry, gosh, probably in 19. Seven, no, 19, yeah, 1971, and uh, became an ordained minister in, nine, in uh, 80, like 82, 83, and then started in deliverance ministry, which I call Fresh Encounters, because it is a Fresh Encounter, and I uh, wrote several publications to support what the Lord is doing in my life and in others' lives. So you, so you, uh, yes. So I, so I, I made the two head two head Maybe I'm maybe I'm the half half um half half sort of that. Which is what I look at. What I'm doing. What I'm what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. My own journey. Okay, and I'm sorry you would like me to share. I didn't understand the entire question. Okay. And it was a journey and it continues to be a journey. I am, uh, as a as a young person, I made some really bad decisions. I made decisions against my parents' will. I made decisions that I knew were going to, you know, be really horrendous probably for me. But at the young age of 18, I thought that I could change my husband. I got married at the age of 18, was not pregnant. Um, was not forced to do it, could have gone to school, which I did. I went to college at night and I worked. But the gentleman I married, my children's dad, um, ended up being a drug addict and he was very, very abusive. Went through a lot of domestic abuse. Um, he would beat me, he was mentally abusive. Um, he cheated the whole time we were married. And, um, I ended up having three children. I was in the apostolic church at the time, and we just didn't believe in divorce. I truly thought that in time he would change and he would stop the abuse and he would start to worship God and go to church with me and with my children. Uh, that was the beginning of, I was in church at the time, of just a horrific roller coaster ride. Um, God is so faithful because through all of that, and I, I will tell, I'm going to tell one story because this still, um, even though 
I have been ministering deliverance for years and taking a lot of people through deliverance still bothers me. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, my husband at one time, because th there were many times I wanted to leave and get a divorce. And I, I just thought, if you don't leave, it's going to kill you. Literally, he's going to kill you. And um, one time he came home and he was high. And we got in an argument. And at this time, I only had one child. He was a year old. And uh, we got in an argument. And of course, he started hitting me. And, uh, and he grabbed me around my neck. We ended up falling on the floor. And he started banging my head against the wall. And he banged my head against the wall so hard that my head went. It made a hole in the wall. I was praying and I truly feel like I know this was God because I was starting to black out. I truly feel like the angels of the Lord lifted me up and carried me out of that room, truly, because he chased me downstairs. He got a knife. We had a five level split from the outside. We looked like a great family. He chased me downstairs, went down to another level and I was able to jump out of the window. And from that time on, I still realize I can't wear a turtleneck around my neck. I can't stand for things to be around this part of my neck. And that's what it was from. And somebody just told me the other day, well, you need to be delivered. I said, I do self-deliverance every day, but it's just, you know, we can forgive. There's just a lot of things we'll never forget. We're human, right? And I tell our stories because women need to understand you too can, I did get through, but it was tough. It was not an easy journey at all. Get, 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 so I know I know what you both told Yes, I would love to. Actually, and I'm going to hold this up, and I hope I'm not holding it up in front of my face. But the, what I did was, um, first publication I wrote, it's called Who Are We Really? And actually, I was divorced. I was married to my children's dad for 20 years. And I got a divorce. He said, I... Um, a couple of my friends told me, they said, well, you're really bitter. You are really bitter. And that's not even who you are. And it's not your personality. And that's how I got involved in deliverance, actually. But it's also what motivated me to write this book. So here's the book. Let me see if I can get it. It's called Who Are We Really? Okay. And it's my journey from the basement to the penthouse. And I love this book because it tells about the journey that I went through. Now, it's more surface level because he's still living and I couldn't take a deep dive. You can only dive, but so deep. But what it tells you is how things started, but through trusting God and standing and through forgiveness, because there's always going to be red flags in our life. And again, I think I told that story about things, you know, around my neck, because that's a red flag. 
And um, there are going to be red flags, but what we have to learn is we've got to forgive, right? Because think about the things we have done in our lives that God has forgiven. God loves us unconditionally, and we have to learn what forgiveness means. We also have to learn that when we've taken offense or when we hold on to things that have hurt us, you have no idea what it's doing to your health. I have had some major health problems. You know, you show up and people think, you know, what you look like, you haven't been through anything, they have not a clue. So I wrote, who are we really to help women understand, but God, if it hadn't been for him, I will stand on the rooftop and scream if it had not been for my God, I would have been dead because there's no way I could have lived through what I've been through. Then when I moved to North Carolina, um, I started a deliverance ministry here, right? And um, in prayer, I clearly heard the Holy Spirit say, and I've never heard a voice like I'm speaking now. It's always in prayer. That's why it's important to pray. But I heard the Holy Spirit say, write a program for your Fresh Encounters Deliverance Ministry. Write a program that can be followed. Write a program that can be taught. And write a program that people can use after they go through the training. So here is my book. Let me get it in here. It's called Fresh Encounters. Can you see it? I'm sorry. Okay, it's called Fresh Encounters. And that's a workbook. And I train with that. I train the trainer, I go to churches and I train the trainers, and then we train anybody in the congregation that wants to go through the program. It's really, really important that leadership, leadership go through that program because we carry so many offenses, mm. a lot of them that we don't even know we're carrying. And I tell people, and this is a little funny, I say, that's why you see the First Baptist on the corner and then you go the next block down and there's a second Baptist. And then you go two blocks over and there's a third Baptist. So somebody got offended and decided they're going to start their own church. <laughs> so we have got to learn what rejection, bitterness, and rebellion really do to us. And then I wrote this one during COVID. Um, I, uh, right before COVID and during, right before COVID, I had a, Oh gosh, I had a cancerous tumor in my stomach and didn't know it. And it was a very, very unusual cancer that doesn't respond to chemo or radiation well. Not only was it unusual, but there were only, I think, less than 200 documented cases of this type of cancer in the world, in the world. Yeah. Um, and just really short before I show you this prayer book, the um, doctor that sent me to the dermatologist saw a mole on my breast. And this is how God works in our life. Saw a mole on my breast. He said, I don't like the way that looks. I want you to go to the dermatologist and have a check. So when I went to the dermatologist, she took a biopsy of the mole. And I said, there's a mole on my back too. And I don't like the way it looks. I said, so can you biopsy that mole? She said, absolutely. So they took the biopsy. She said, you'll hear from me in two weeks. If you don't hear from me, everything's fine. You'll get a letter. But if you do hear from me, there's probably an issue. A couple of weeks later to the day, I got my letter. And I was telling my husband, I said, yeah, um, and Three days later, so I got my letter on a Monday. Three days later, on Thursday, I got an emergency call from the doctor. And the receptionist said, I need to talk to you. Can you take a minute? She said, the doctor wants to speak to you right away. Uh, what doctor calls you, right? And so the doctor got on the phone and said, we made a mistake. And she said, I told my husband about the mole on your back and how it bled. And I had to cauterize it. I think that's the word. She said it bled profusely. I couldn't stop it from bleeding. And he said, let me take a look. 
and he's a Yale graduate, right? He took a look at it and he said, get her in here right away. It's not just a mole. She's got a cancerous tumor growing down in her back. So um, that's what she told me. And she said, what time can you be in here? Long story short, audience, I was in surgery at three o'clock to remove the tumor. That's how important it was. That motivated me to write the prayer book. Can you see this? Yeah. Move it over. Yes. Move it over. Okay, can you see it? And it's called Wind of God Blow. Um, this I wrote that during COVID. And again, in prayer, I clearly heard the Holy Spirit say, you've got to write prayers. Don't make them long and drawn out. Make them very specific. And he told me, he said, I'm going to tell you how to write them. He said, people aren't going to read long prayers, but people need prayers. They need to know how to pray. Just think if you hadn't been praying, hadn't been obedient you wouldn't be here right now because if that cancer gets into your lymph nodes which thank god it didn't if it gets into your lymph nodes it's basically the end of your life it's called coral it's called ekrin coral carcinoma it looks like you look like you've been on a little bit of it. Um, wow. 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 Yes. So to get that book from you, you to know you, you that but to me that was God's God's God. 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 Amen. His timing is perfect. Oh, oh, you're a beautiful 50, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you look great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um if you don't mind, I'm mind. I'm some of the things that I want to so I'm sorry. If you don't mind, I'm not reading your scriptures. Sure, let me find one of my. I have some faves. Let me see. No, you did. Okay, hey, I, I opened it and guess what? I opened it too. What? Get what? to know God. Oh, hey. And I'm speaking mightily. Get to know God. I just opened it. So. Let me tell you how he told me to write it first because I think that's important. So he said, what I want you to do is, he said, you write some of the famous quotes, look up some famous quotes. I mean, it was very, very specific. So I said, okay. And then he said, do a prayer in 10. Um, and again, I truly believe the Holy Spirit was saying, teach my people how to pray. Teach them how to pray. Just, you know, it's it's not long and drawn out. So he said, do the prayer intent. He said, do the prayer. And then he said, on the back of the post, write out your scripture. So I'm going to read, get to know God. Okay. So it starts out. Don't ask God to guide your steps if you're not willing to move your feet. That's the saying. Prayer intent. There's a difference between knowing God and knowing about God. To know him is to find contentment. And then this is the prayer. Father, I honor you today. It is my desire to get to know you better because that's the only way I can put my trust in you. I need to look at my relationship with you like a friendship. The only way I can truly trust a friend is to spend time with them and get to know them. I come to you broken and confused, but I have got to get to know you for myself. I cannot continue to depend on the pastor to preach to me and then leave empty because I haven't spent any time with you. Often, I wonder what in the world is going on in my life. Help me to understand 
that you are in control and you have my best interest at heart. Guess what? You have my back. So Father, give me the desire to study your word so I know your will for my life. I am determined to mature in the things that affect my relationship with you. I feel like my spiritual account is bankrupt because my prayer life is totally infruitful. So that's prayer. How about that? And so then on the back, in the back, on the back, um, oh, and I have um, on the back, I say, give me wisdom to know the areas of my life that are stealing time away from you. I will be intentional about the time I spend with you because it's obvious I have to get to know you better. I will get on my knees in prayer because I know it's the only way I will truly get on my feet. Whoa. I'm going to say that again. I will get on my knees and rewind. Hey, some of this stuff is so deep. When I read it, I'm like, girl, you know that was the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I will get on my knees in prayer or however you want to pray. You don't always have to get on your knees. You can be in a chair. You can be standing, walking, however. Because the only way I will truly get on my feet is to pray in Jesus' name. And then what I do is I give scripture on the back. So the first scripture I gave was Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, New King James Version. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. And then what I did, I'll just read one more. Uh, let's read from the Message Bible. The kids love the Message Bible. This is James 4, 7 through 10. So let God work his will in you. Yell aloud, no, to the adversary, and watch him scamper. Say a quiet yes to God. And he'll be there in no time, dabbling in sin. Purify your inner life, plan the field. Get bottom and cry your eyes out. The fun and games are over. Serious, really serious. Get down on your knees before the master. It's the only way you'll get on your feet. Again, James 4, 7 through 10, that's the message so that wow. Yeah, that's the first one I opened up to. How about that? That's great. 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 so, so I have a slow. I have a slow one. She is called twenty twenty. It's all about me. So twenty twenty. Elder Kenneth. All about me. All about me. To know that she knows she will do the try. The tribulation. The tribulation. At the time. And you still still. Smile, 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 you know, 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 you you know, you 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 know, now, now. I, I'm going to say one thing, um, and then I'll go into that a little bit. But I hold the word deep in my heart. And there's a scripture that says the word of God is living and it's active. 
is sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul, spirit, joy, and marrow. Judges the thoughts and the attitude of the heart, y'all. Nothing is hidden from God. Everything is laid bare before him, of whom we all must give account. My thing is, he has saved me so many times. He has saved my life. And if we become honest with ourselves and we're introspective, we will see a lot of things that God has done in our lives that have been signs, wonders, and miracles. Don't think it has to be this big, you know, thing in front of everybody. It's not about that. What has God done in your life? What has, you know, what has he saved you from? So one of the things I do is I memorize scripture. My, and I'm not going to say the whole thing because it's very long. My favorite scripture is Psalms 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow. Y'all, that's where I abide. I try to stay under the shadow of the almighty. And I pray that God let me always stay under an open heaven to be a conduit by which the angels can ascend and descend. Give me a word, God. Give me wisdom. Give me discernment. Don't let me be upset about the past. The past is the past. As I tell people, why do you think the rear view mirror is so small and the mirror in front of your car is so large? Because you need to keep looking ahead. Your windshield is large because you need to look forward. Stop going backwards. We can't do anything going backwards. The other thing is that keeps me going is I want to be used by him. I don't want to be walking around angry or, you know, mad or, you know, this happened to me or why did that happen? It's not about that. It's like, God, how can you use those experiences in my life to make a difference? And I'm going to tell you one more thing. What he did after I divorced the kid's dad, I got on, I literally got on my knees and I said, God, if you bless me, if you help me, because I was so afraid, I said, I will forever serve you. And it was like, <laughs> I meant that. Have I made mistakes? Have I stumbled and fallen? Absolutely. We're going to make mistakes until we go to glory. Um, but the key is to get up, to repent, and to turn and quit doing the same thing over and over and over. So when I said that, I meant that. Yeah. My life is dedicated to him because guess what? I dwell. I just stay in that secret place. Prayer is all that. It's everything. My, um, I am retired. I get up in the morning, um, five o'clock. I'm in the prayer room where I pray by mm -hmm. 5 520. And I just start my day praying. And trying to hear, I ask God, revelation, knowledge, give me wisdom and discernment. Show me what is in my life that needs to be corrected. I ask God, what is the residue? What is that thing that is that thing that is a stench into your nostrils and that grieves your spirit in my life that needs to be delivered? I don't want to think I'm all that. I will never think that. All I am is a vessel willing to be used by him. And I'm going to tell you, he performed signs, wonders, and miracles in my life. And my life went from that wife that was being beat and abused. And, and it wasn't the whole time. Don't I'm not trying to act like, you know, I was a victim. It wasn't the whole time, the whole 20 years, of course not. But it was a long time. So I, I you know, went from that to God saying, okay, I got you. There's some things I need you to do for the kingdom. And I started my own business and it was phenomenal how successful the business was in a matter of total. I kept it for 13 years and then I sold it. But within four or five years, God had put his handprint and fingerprint all over that business. And to him, I give the glory. Amen. Yes, um, the website is www.paulainsministries.com. 
www.paulainnis.org. Again, Paula Ennis, I-N-N-I-S-S, ministries.org. And you can go on the site, read about the ministry, and you can also order any of the materials that I've just talked about. And I'm going to tell you, they put it in. That prayer book is anointing. God, I mean, just for me to open it up, you know, because he he told me I had to write it. He said, you have to write it. And I remember starting and I'm like, God, this is so hard. He said, but you're going to finish it until you finish it. You're not going to move forward. What? Hold on. What yes, he does. Right. I'm can I correct one thing? I made a mistake in the very beginning, probably because I was a little nervous. Um, on the dates that I started in ministry, I started in ministry in so I got married in seventy one. I was I divorced in ninety one, and was an ordained minister by ninety two ninety three ish, and then pastor, then elder. Okay, so I just wanted to correct that because even though I was in the church, I was not ordained. You know, I just want to share that I think you're awesome. Um, when I met you, uh, I met you a long time ago and then we reconnected, but I think you're an awesome woman of God. I think that you have a story to tell and I love what you're doing with the podcast and I want you to just keep going. I will be there to support. Um, just keep going. You have a story to tell. And we need to listen. We need to slow down as a people. And we need to listen because if we listen, start, I tell people, stay vertical. Now, everybody should know what that means. Stay vertical. Stay in prayer. Don't make it boring. Make it fun. You know how to pray for hours and hours and hours. Just say something like it says in that get to know God. Treat him as a friend. It's my best friend. Treat him as a friend. And I'll tell you, if you if you do that, your life will. God told me my life will go from where I was on that floor straight up. And it did. And that business I started, I'm telling you, I didn't know how to run a business. And I had a great job with Xerox Corporation at the time in the 80s and 90s. But God said, I got so much more for you. Because I'm going to use, use you for my glory because you will never take my glory. So if I could say one thing, get to know him. Start somewhere. Get a prayer book. Get a prayer book. Start somewhere. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Please, please watch this. Watch this movie. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it's Thank you, 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 thank you
I'm Morgan Reese, inviting you to tune in weekly for some empowering, enlightening, and embracing conversations to kickstart your day on Good Morning Black People.